welcome back. This is this is a uh, thermodynamics homework uh, number seven. Um, this is on uh, basically flash and uh, what was missed on uh, vapor liquid equilibrium specifically um, due temperature. Uh, so this one's a flash problem and it has a much prettier picture than what I drew. Um, it's kind of a three-part problem, but I'll, I'll break up the parts um, in different videos. So this one is just label the path for the following process detailed. Okay, so um, again, it, it, it's hard to uh, <laughs> um, describe the path. Uh, I mean, without an exact picture, but you know, it's it's all the qualitative components. So, um, and the whole point though is. Uh, you know, going through the graph, and then obviously um, uh, the next part of the problem is stating the composition of different points, and then the final part is using all that information to solve the mass balance. Okay, so let's get into it. So um, a feed comes in through a compressor at 31 kPa and 90% of component 1. Okay, so how do I disseminate that information? Okay, well, obviously at 31 kPa indicates a pressure. Okay, so uh, I'm looking for a composition at 31. So, you know, let's say this is 31, I'm looking somewhere on that line, okay? So somewhere on, th on the line of 31 kPa, I'm looking for, you know, to put my first dot, okay? And then this is 90% of component one, okay? And so at the bottom here, it says X, it says Y, and what it doesn't say, but it's implied, is Z, okay? It never will say Z at the bottom, but it's implied. So X represents the liquid compositions that come from the bubble line, and Y represents the vapor compositions that come from the dew line, okay? And that's why it's there, because that's, I mean, if you think about it, that's what's graphed here. I don't have Z's graphed here. I have X compositions, at equilibrium, and Y compositions at equilibrium. I don't have Z's on this graph, not technically, so that's why it's really not in the label. Okay, but, you know, it's in a sense there. Okay, so when it says 90% of component one, I has to be one of those three. It has to be the liquid composition, a vapor composition, or an overall composition. When I really boil it down though, well, what makes sense? Does it, it, it doesn't say anything about a vapor, and it doesn't say anything about a liquid. It just says, 90%. And so I have to read that as, okay, Z um, is 90%, okay. And so I, you know, I look for 31, and I look for 90%, and I put a little dot, okay. And that, and, you know, kind of eyeballing it, that's about where I start, okay. So that's where, that's where A is, okay. The pressure is raised to 36 kPa and the stream exits. Um, all right, I have to move on this graph. I can move in all sorts of directions, but I have to read what it says to figure out how I'm moving. Okay, it says the pressure is raised. So I have two directions. I have this direction, and I have this direction. This direction indicates a change in overall composition. Not a change in composition, a change in overall composition. So unless I... I, I change Z somehow, I can never move horizontally. And so that either indicates I'm doing a separation between different phases, I'm adding a component, I'm removing a component, but really those are the only ways I can move this way, okay? And the only ways I can move this way, if everything's at the same temperature, is you know, by changing the pressure. Now I can move this way, in a sense, by changing the temperature, but then my, my, essentially my graph is no longer valid because this graph is at a specific temperature, okay? And so it invalidates the graph that you're using, okay? Um, and it would be better to, to, to have a TXY versus a PXY, okay? So it says the pressure is raised to 36 kPa and the stream exits. There's no 
nothing about separating, there's nothing about adding, there's nothing about subtracting components. So, I only can move horizontally. It's raised, so I gotta go up. How far do I go up? Well, until it's 36. Now, if I look here, 36 at 0.9, it actually goes all the way through, okay? And I get to that point. Okay, somewhere about there, okay? The pure component two is added to the stream until the vapor fraction is 16%. Okay, well, that's tricky, okay? Well, how, I mean, can I eyeball 16%? I mean, is that really viable to, to, to eyeball 16%? No. So let's look at the formula to figure out, okay, well, how do I move forward? Okay, so I have a vapor fraction, and it says that z minus x over y minus x, okay, and the absolute value of that, okay. Well, let's see here. So pure component 2, so let's figure out first off, okay, pure component 2 is added to the stream. So is that going to change the pressure? It doesn't indicate that there's a change in pressure, so I can't really assume one, okay? And if I really think about it, am I liquid or am I vapor in that context? I'm liquid, and so I'm you know, adding stuff isn't, you know, isn't really going to change the pressure because it's, you know, it's an incompressible liquid, essentially, you know, that's what we're assuming. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's not going to change the pressure, it's just going to change the composition, okay? So it is going to move just horizontally. The question is how much and in which direction. So I'm adding component two, okay? So which re rep what represents adding component two? Well, this is component one down here, so that means component one is gonna go down because there's more component two. So I'm gonna move this way. How much? I have no idea. But it says the vapor fraction is 16%. So I know I'm somewhere in this region. The real question is how much? Okay, well this has to equal 16%. Okay. So do I know what the Z needs to be at 16% just off the bat? No, I don't. Why, I, why, why don't I know it? I mean, I knew what the Z was here, but I don't know how far I'm moving, right? Because how far I move dictates the Z, right? Okay, so really, that's probably my unknown. Do I know X and Y? Do I know the X and Y at that pressure? I do. There's my uh, y, and there's my x. Okay. Because those aren't going to change. Those, if I know the temperature and the pressure, I already have done this problem you know, on the last homework. I've shown that if I know the temperature and pressure, because that's what I do, I know the temperature, because that's what this graph represents, and I know the pressure, this horizontal line. So I know what the x and y have to be. Okay. And so I read the line, so where are we at? We're at 36 kPa, so I look at 36 kPa, and I look at the y. Okay, the y is about 0.82, or rather, the x is about 0.82. So 0 0.82 minus z, okay, and if I look at the y, that one's about 0.7, okay. Now, you know me, I don't like it when you plug in numbers prematurely, so let's do the algebra on this before, because really we're trying to solve for z, because we know everything else. And so, if we solve for this, now we can see that this one is bigger than this one, okay? And we know that the z is going to be smaller, okay? Um, so we kind of want to keep it this way. So, vf times y minus x plus x should equal z. Yeah, I mean, that, that should dictate it, okay? What is that math? 
Oh, let's see here. 0. 0.12 times 0. 0.16. Um, let's see here. 40, 96, uh, uh, 200, uh, 190, 1.92. Okay. Is that 1.92 plus x? Well, actually, negative 1.92 plus x, because this is negative, okay? So I've got 0.16 times negative 0.12, and that's about negative 0.192. I add 0.82 to that. Uh, oh, I made a mistake here somewhere. Um, Yeah, that, this, this number must not be right. Um, whatever it would be, I mean, I don't have a calculator on me. So whatever that would be, that, that, you know, that's my, that's my Z, okay? Um, I think, if I remember right, it's, you know, something like um, 0 0.8. I think I tried to make it so that Z was equal to exactly 0 0.8. So let's just say that's what it was, okay? I mean, and that would make sense. I mean, that would be about 16%. Okay. Um, and so, but that's how I figure out how far I want to move over. I, I don't eyeball it. I, you know, and, and 0 0.8 would be about 16%, I think, you know, from an eyeballing point of view. All right. The pressure drops to 35 kPa after the mixing, okay? So, so I am kind of doing it in a two-step process. You know, like, can you really do that? Can you do that in a two-step process? Well, let's think about that. Is this path dependent? No, I mean, I'm just kind of looking at what's, you know, what's the difference between these. Things. It's really not path dependent, so it's okay. So it drops to 35. And, yeah, and that makes sense for it to still be 0.8. Right? Again, I just move horizontally. Okay, the mixture is fed into a flash tank to separate it into a liquid and vapor. Okay, well that means I'm going over here to be my liquid and I'm going over here to be my vapor. Okay. And then the liquid, so the one on the right, is sent to a throttling valve to lower the pressure until one drop remains. Okay. And so this one is until one drop remains. Basically, I go to the dew line. The vapor is compressed until one bubble remains, which means I keep going up until I get the bubble line. And then I'm done. So, you know, the key thing is to be able to read this. And at any time that vapor fraction is mentioned, okay, well, I need to do this. I need to kind of account for, okay, I have this formula. Um, how can that help me, you know, figure things out? Now, the one thing that this might not be able to truly help you out with, like with a problem in class, is, well, if you don't know the temperature or if you don't know the pressure, okay? But you know the temperature, you know the pressure, you know that those haven't changed, you're changing the composition, and so this is easy enough to figure out what that final composition needs to be.